Okay, now you're ready to see the magic of Ajax at work and the get data function, which you've tied to the button in the in this index.html example web application. You're past the name of the file to fetch and the ID of the development in which to display the results, the downloaded text. So let's take a look at actually how this works using Ajax. You start by checking as you know whether or not the XML HTTP request object has been created and if it has then you can use that objects open method methods are built in functions of JavaScript objects you say open and you specify the HTTP method get get is one of the primary ways of downloading data from web servers you're going to see also a little bit later how to work with post and you pass then the data source. The data source is technically an URL, the URL of the data you want to fetch from the server. Now this URL is set to, simply set to data.text in this example. Now that works because data.text is in the same directory as index.html on the web server. So all you have to do is pass what's called a relative URL here, data.text, that's in the same directory as index.html. That must be in the same directory as index.html. And then when you specify the data source, you can, you can use an absolute or relative URL. This example uses a relative URL because the data source, data.txt, the actual file is in the same directory as index.html. So more on relative versus absolute URLs is coming up as well. Then after you open the URL, the data source URL, nothing's happened yet. There's been no attempt to fetch anything from the server. What you do next is you use the XML HTTP request objects on ready state change property and you assign to that property a JavaScript function. Now this JavaScript function is going to handle the downloaded text, the downloaded data as you'll see coming up next in the next movie. However, the important thing here is you assign a new JavaScript function to the on ready state change property of the XML HTTP request object. So this is how the where the asynchronous part of Ajax comes in because this assigns to the on ready state change property a JavaScript function. That function will be called when your data is ready to be viewed, ready to be worked with. Okay, so that's, that is the asynchronous part of Ajax right there. XML HTTP request object, and you use the on ready state change property of that object, and you assign that a function that you want to have called when your data is ready to be viewed. Okay, we'll take a look at that in the next movie. After you have set up the XML HTTP request object in this way, you've opened it, you've assigned a function, a callback function it's called, to the on ready state change property, then you're ready to actually interact with the server. How do you do that? You use the XML HTTP request objects send method. Now in the send method, and you're using the HTTP get method here, this and the object send method, uh, in, when you use the get method is you only have to pass a value of null in order to actually interact with the server. So this is the line that actually interacts with the server. Nothing's actually happening with the server until you actually send, in this case, a value of null. And that works because you've already configured the XML HTTP request object with the HTTP get method, and you've configured it with the URL to get. You have assigned a function, a JavaScript callback function, to the on ready state change property so that that function will be called when there's a change in the state of the data that's being downloaded from the web server. And then finally, to make things actually happen, you say XML HTTP request object dot send, and because you're using the get HTTP method in order to interact with the server, you just have to set a value of null. That's going to change when you work with the post HTTP method, as you're going to see. So that's that's it in outline. You have you use the open method first to configure the XML HTTP request object with the URL and the HTTP method to fetch the data, and then you assign a callback function to the on ready state change property. We're going to 
talk about the details of that function coming up next. And then finally, all you have to do is to interact with the server is to use the send method, the XML HTTP request objects send method, sending a value of null. And that's it. The next step is to wait for and to handle the data that, that comes back from the server.